Hello everyone and welcome back. So in this video we'll have a look at some tips and tricks when using groups. We'll be having a look at some expressions, some VEX examples and so on. So let's start simple by using these boxes as an example. And let's say you want to group the top and bottom primitives or the primitives facing the y-axis. And for that we can use a group expression and set at the end dot y. So this actually works in some cases, but it fails if you change the dimensions of the box. So let's see a, a number where it fails, right here. And uh, a fix for this is actually to use another expression, which is absolute n dot y is bigger than 0.5 giving it a threshold and that way you can get the top and bottom primitives no matter the size of the box as you can see another way to achieve this is quite simple is by using the the normal group nodes the most simple one and you can enable keep by normals as you can see and change it to y and zero and if you have by default you only have one primitive but you can check this box include normals matching opposite direction and then you will have the bo both uh, prims but let's say you want to group the x and z primitives so you can use the same expression but this time inverting the signal and that way you can get the inverse effect which you can't really get with the group node by default as far as i know okay let's look at the second example in here i have a line and i'm bending it and creating a sweep with a few columns and let's say you want to group the ends of this shape something like this you can use a group range with the following expression first selecting the the, the columns amount in this case is five we need to add one since we're selecting points and from there we can subtract for, from the total amount of points the selection amount, that way ending with the extremities selected. If you want to select just one extremity or one end, you can use the same expression in the select amount and just use endpoints in the second input. Another way to do this is again with a group range, but dividing selecting the range type to equal partitions and then in the number of partitions we can input the number of points on the initial line and then we can offset the, the partition as you can see we can pass so that's another way but coming back to the first example where I'm selecting the, the ends of the shape let's say you want to divide these into two groups so one way you can do that is by using a connectivity node and set the point include group to be group one which is this one and now we can simply in a group node set at class equals to zero it will select this group here this end and then at class equals to one it will select this one and we can also invert the result by setting at class equals minus one, which is not included. So now I have a set of curves and I want to select the first point of each one. One way we can do that if you have access to the construction history, let's say, you can group here the first point and then it will propagate to the other curves when you copy the points but in case you don't have access to it we can use a group by range and select the start invert the range 
and in here check the connectivity in the connectivity tab affect disconnected geometry separately and then you can have the the first point of each or the first or the last or the first and the last this is how you can do it so in this example i wanted to show you how you can select edge loops uh, procedurally uh, with the default group node by using the group by bounding box so i'm starting with the box that is two units in the x and has a few subdivisions on the y-axis and first of all if you're using group by bounding regions or bounding box you want to to set the size in this case the z size is equal to one so i don't need to change it but just in case you can use the bounding box in this case and set z, z size so in case you you change it it will work procedurally and i have the x size and the z size and since i, I just want to select uh, a line of uh, a single loop i am using a very small scale on the y and for the center this is where the expression comes in handy we can select we can start the center from the y max so from the top and subtract the bounding box size divided by the number of subdivisions and then multiply that that uh, unit let's say that uh, measurement by the the edge loop you want to select so let's say 12 from 12 to 0 as you can see or 13 So let's say you have a, a you have drawn a simple curve and you want to convert it to have uh, smooth transitions and sharp corners where it should be. So going from this to this in here, we can start by drawing the curve, making sure it's closed or it has a polygon. And then we can measure the curvature and convert it to a curve by setting the group to all. And if we resample it right now, you will have just and set it to subdivision curves. And even if you say, if even if you set to resample by polygon edge, it will smooth everything as you can see. So one way we can avoid it is again by measuring the curvature converting to, to a curve and grouping as you can see I am grouping the art edge or the, the corner points and I'm doing that by saying in the group base at curvature bigger than 0.9 in this case and it's selecting all the art points let's say and then we can cut the line at those points and just resample it as you can see it will work because the the primitives are not no longer connected they will resample separately and then since we have a lot of points unnecessary we can just use a fa facet node and remove inline points and play with the distance until you're happy with the result then we can fuse and make it again a single line, a single primitive, let's say. And if you take a line and you sweep with the cross section, you will have a nice profile. So in here I have a planner patch and a head node with just a single point in the center of the world and in these vex snippets i'm grouping the the closest point or the nearest point to the second input position and you can simply do that by querying the position of the second input of the point in the second input and then just use the near point 
with the incoming geometry or the the first uh, input in here and using the position from the second input then you just set a point group to the pin group then name it pin uh, pin point or pin group and uh, use the near point selected and uh, use one to set the group and you can you need to do this over the detail and then we can do something similar to this procedurally so if I take the add node and select we can do this effect in here and it's uh, it always works because it's calculating the nearest point so in case you didn't get the idea I'm basically getting the unshared edges or unshared points and then from that base group I'm selecting just a few and using the shortest path from the center point to the unshared. So that's about it. I hope you have learned at least something new. And if you are interested in this file, you can find it on my Patreon. And thanks to everyone that joined so far. And I hope to see you next time. Thank you.